This is Oklahoma wide receiver Marvin Mims Jr. And you can catch him at the top of the screen making his way down south. And I think this is the trait that sticks out the most to him. Obviously, he can win with speed. You kind of see that in here. But his ball tracking ability and his ability to high point passes is kind of what stands out to me. Once again, Hayden, another 5'11", 183 pound wide receiver in this class. Now, you know he's going to get vertical, especially with that 4'3", 8'40", 1'5", 10-yard split. Outstanding jumps an above average three cone. And where I really liked him is exactly what you said. Sometimes he was kind of on the backside of a lot of these concepts. And if the defense was flowing to that side, they would leak him out and either the dropping linebacker or the safety or the corner trying to work over top would have a difficult time. And if he does have a defender in his back pocket, we saw a number of circus grabs. He definitely is comfortable playing in contest situations and in tight coverage as a vertical player. And you know, I've said this with a bunch of the other ones that we've talked about. It's not just speed in order to be a deep threat. You also have to track and you also have to win with a corner in your hip. And I think he does that at a pretty solid level. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that. He had one of the most impressive catches. And it's not even in this highlight reel where he went around a defender's body to come catch it. There's a couple highlights of him going over his shoulder, making some big plays. Um, I have some concerns with his game, though, not to the level extent with like Jalen Hyatt. But I will say Oklahoma's offense would ask him to run a lot of option routes. Mm -hmm. and there would be a lot of plays where he would not be running routes like we kind of talked about with the Tennessee offense. So I do think I don't hear that kind of complaint very often with Marvin Mims. But I'm not sure how many NFL style routes we actually got from him just because of the way that he used he was used at Oklahoma. Their other concern I had is he was doing a little bit of everything. They would get him in the backfield to do some slot stuff. They would have him in the slot doing normal slot stuff. They would have him on the outside running vertical routes. And I was kind of struggling to figure out what exactly is his best trait. Where is he going to win? I think maybe he's going to be like a vertical slot type of player. Maybe he can win in the Z. Um, but I haven't seen the full development. Now, the reason why Dynasty community for fantasy uh, folks out there love him so much is because he's a 21 year old early declare but to me i think there's a lot of development that needs to happen with him just because the way that he was used at oklahoma like that route right there you can see him he's turning back looking at the quarterback in the middle of his route he's trying to read the coverage look and see where the quarterback is and there's a lot of routes that are just kind of feel wasted watching wide receivers on all 22 is very frustrating because you have to go through so much bullshit to find the actual route that's going to translate and with him in particular it was constantly just like that didn't matter that didn't matter that didn't matter so i don't really fully agree with the dynasty community with their love i don't even agree with my model that much with him just because of some of the uh, intricacies of the Oklahoma offense. Yeah, it's interesting. You cut a bunch of clips from the Iowa State game. That was by far and away his worst one, including a couple drops. But then like on the season, PFF just started him with four drops on the year. And in this game, it's different in terms of the tight coverage, contest situations, playing the ball in the air, because I would say it wasn't his strength, whereas in a lot of other games, it definitely was. Okay, so let's run through some of the keys to that profile, because as you said, 54 catches for 1,083 yards and six touchdowns this past season. He also has two other years of like really strong production. Going back to his freshman year, he had nine touchdowns, right? And then as you said, played 571 snaps on the outside versus 220 in the slot this year. Previous to that in 2021, it was more slot snaps than out wide. But overall, I, I agree with your comment where as like your number three vertical option, I think you know what you're going to get. And that is perfectly outlined with 34 deep catches on 66 targets, 51.5% catch rate in those but that makes up like the vast majority of his production. And you yeah. don't really have much to go off of in the intermediate and especially short game. Yeah, 56% of his yards, 100% of his touchdowns last year came on targets 20 plus air yards downfield. Right. So almost Huge like number. All basically all of his production came on those deep uh, passes. I think like maybe a comparison. I don't love this comparison, but kind of similar type of players. Darnell Mooney slightly a uh, smaller guy can win in the slot a little bit on the outside i think has worked in the screen game a little bit but i think ultimately he's just better as a downfield type of player and i think that's what i can hope uh, marvin mims can kind of turn into 20.1 yards per reception that's in the 95th percentile among drafted wide receivers in their last college season he also has punt returner experience and i think that's how he's going to get on the field immediately and i think that's kind of how he wins in his receiving profile as well just kind of like all right if i get a little bit of space here i definitely can take this thing 
to the house. Um, but I didn't see a lot of like bend in his game in breaking routes. Not a whole lot of that. I saw a lot of option routes. You can't butter your bread in the NFL with that type of route. And I don't think that he's strong enough to win against press man coverage on the outside. And that's why I think that Lincoln Riley had him in the slot. Even last year, he played, I think, 45% of his snaps in the slot. So I know the spreadsheet guys love him. I think there's a chance for him to develop. I think it's going to take some time. And players that need time to develop, I think, are stuck in round three. To skew this positively, couldn't you see him being an upgrade on someone like Quez Watkins? For oh, example, 100%. Seems like I think that's perfect. The vertical slot number three in your offense yep. that can really maximize big plays. Yep. Like now, and also when you're trying to defend him, you better have your scene covered because if you don't, like it's split off. It. Yep. He, he will split it and he will create a big play. But a lot has to happen in order for him to be more than a vertical number three. Like here, here's the spectrum I put him on in terms of comparisons. Denarius Moore, if that name. Yeah, I remember you. him. Couple big seasons. Mm -hmm. Nelson Aguilar. Okay. John Brown, I think is the best case scenario. Mm. Because John Brown was around this same size. Tiny. But I would say developed into at times a number two option who could yes. do more than just vertical. Listening to his interviews, like I, I, I think he understands yeah. the areas that he does have to work on, but we just haven't seen much of it yet because like you kind of said, a la Tennessee's offense, this was working to a certain degree. His skill set fit it to a certain degree. And then because of that, I mean, again, 51.5% catch rate on 20 plus yard targets is mm -hmm. ludicrous stuff. Yes. At the same time, only 4.2 receptions per game in an Oklahoma offense that typically is playing very fast. Obviously, that was with Lincoln Riley. Lincoln Riley went to USC, if you hadn't heard. Um, but my model still loved him, despite the reception totals being lower. 83rd percentile uh, production when you adjust for his age, which he's young, and the team's strength over there at Oklahoma. And early declares from the Power Five, especially athletic ones, are the type of profiles that we should be betting on. So even though I think I think there's some concerns here, I'm with you that listening to his interviews, some of the uh, the special teams experience, I think that there's room for development. And I think that's why I'm still going to be in on him to some degree. I don't think that he's a starter immediately, but I think he can kind of grow into that role. I had like Darius Slayton kind of come to mind a little bit. He kind of wins more on the outside, which I don't think Mims is going to do. But these are the type of range. The John Brown one, I think that's a good comp for like what his realistic ceiling can be. And there's a chance that he actually just kind of hits that. I think that he can progress yeah. nicely, but I think it might happen a year three breakout, which we rarely get. I can see Marvin Mims uh, being one of those. And what's different from him than I think other 5'11", 183 vertical players is, again, these these contested, the, these fighting targets that he does have to come up with. Like he had a great one, a fully extended one against Oklahoma State. Another one, the front right pylon against Texas, which wasn't really a route, but he did a great job completely twisting around and like mm -hmm. getting his knee down. Another one against TCU as well. He covered up against Iowa State because he knew contact was was coming. This class is full of these body types, though. And yeah. if if I can just highlight why I might want to spend a round three pick on Marvin Mims rather than an end of the first round pick on Jalen Hyatt, mm -hmm. it's for that exact reason. We have examples of corners sticking in the hip pocket of Marvin Mims on these downfield targets and him winning in those instances. I have big questions if Jalen Hyatt is able to do that because there were fewer examples and I felt like he succeeded less often in those two. Yeah, I think that's totally fair. I think for a lot of these players, I would rather have the round three version of what we're going to get <laughs> from these first round wide receiver prospects. So if it's like the first round Jalen Hyatt or third round Marvin Mims, even though I like Hyatt more, I would be totally fine if my team went the Marvin Mims route. I just want to reiterate, I just think it's going to take time to develop, but everything about his profile, his interviews, everything suggests that he will kind of keep up this pace and go that route so i don't think that he's gonna go too high in the draft just no. because he gets thrown around after the catch like he's not gonna be breaking tackles there's gonna be formations where he's not gonna be a part of it he can't really block because i i will say he tries to block but he's just so small that he gets thrown around a lot so he's got to bulk up i think maybe a little bit and we'll see where he goes from there but really good kid i think that special teams experience is definitely gonna help him out and i would say that effort and blocking like you said is there just the success yep. sometimes wavers back and forth at the very least he's going to be a role player early on like this is a role on a team and it's just on him mm -hmm. to develop more after that and i know my buddy matt waldman longtime friend compared him to san antonio holmes and i think that wow. might be like the biggest okay. case out there so 
intriguing profile to follow. You can check out the rest of the prospect videos that we have on the channel, anywhere from nine minutes to 15 minutes, wide receivers, running backs. We'll get some tight ends and quarterbacks on there as well. Click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. So they're in your feed as soon as we post them. And you can draft Marvin Mims and Jonathan Mingo and Cedric Tolman and all these other wide receivers on Underdog Fantasy right now. The only place you can do it. Play best ball once. You'll love it. It's the best part of fantasy football. We'll see you next time.